Now, let us quickly go over what we were looking at the last class. Now, we were looking at the six steps to creating a relational database. We are still on step one, which is discovering the entities and assigning the attributes. Last class, what we did was we looked at discovering the entities and assigning the attributes to the entity discovered. Tonight should be a very short class, and we're just going to talk about how we go about selecting identifiers and keys from the attributes for the entities. Again, last class we talked about what is an entity. What did we say an entity was? Tangible object of interest from the user's domain. So remember how we looked at uh, the problem and how we go about discovering the entities. How did we, what did we say entities were? Nouns and collective nouns. And what we did was that we went through the problem and we underlined all of the nouns and all of the collective nouns. And those we said were our entities. And for each entities, we uh, found attributes for those. We discovered the attributes. And how did we discover the attributes? What did we say an attribute was? The attributes describe the characteristics of the entity. It is the properties of the entity. So each entity will have several attributes. So that's where we are. So we have a list of entities, then we have attributes for the entities. Let's uh, briefly recap the two problems that we looked at regarding step 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. One, this was the first problem, where we looked at the lecturers at the community college want an application to help them to keep track of their advisees and uh, basically a degree audit for them. That's the first case study. And when we looked at that and we looked at the first step, we came up with these uh, nouns, lecturers, nouns and collective nouns. Lecturers, students, uh, courses, users, user logins and logouts. There was a debate as to grades. Tonight we will clarify that a little as why grades is not in there as a, a noun or collective noun or an object of interest. Uh, next, after that, this is the second problem. We looked at a small accounting firm wants a simple HR application to keep track of employees, the position employees, the positions, allowances, and salary scales. Uh, and this is what we came up with. Uh, employees, positions, allowances, salary scales, the vehicles assigned to those positions. Very simple problems. But the, the point is that you should have a clear and concise description of the problem. And then you use that description now to pluck out the nouns and the collective nouns. And that is what uh, forms the basis of selecting what your entities are. The entities are usually the nouns or the collective nouns that you have here. This is what we came up with. We have the lecturers, students, courses, users, first name, last name, the students, the name, uh, courses, login entries, and so on. So this is what we have. Uh, for the first case study, the entity name is at the top and then the attributes are in there. Uh, we said that grades uh, was not great. Look at the attributes. You need to ensure that each attribute belongs in that entity. And there was a little test, you say, last name is for lecturers, first name is for lecturers, this kind of thing, to ensure that the attribute is where it belongs. When we did that with grades, we had a little problem, didn't we? Because we found that grades belong to two things. It belongs to the student and the course that they took. It's a combination. It doesn't fit nicely into one of them. That's why we don't have grades in there. This is the one with the HR system. Now, you notice there's a lot more information that is being collected here from uh, the employee. There's the address. Uh, some telephone numbers, a social security number, and the reason is that that is what uh, wants that that is what the user, the client wants to capture. Remember, I keep saying all the time, you have to go back, you have to keep going back to the client. They will have some forms. You go back and you ask them, well, this is what you want, this is what you want recorded, this is what you want in the system. And as somebody said, you go back, you come back, you go back, you come back, you ask them if you're sure. You sure, you really sure, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you want to be sure that the information that you have here is the information that is captured uh, by the client and the information that the client 
once stored in their database. Okay, moving on from here in the first step, there is one other thing that needs to be done. We need to, for each entity, select an identifier. If you, you cannot select an identifier, create one that will uh, work as what we call a primary key. That will be the primary key. You also need to select other identifiers that will be possible keys. So we're looking for indexes or keys, and we also need a primary key. Now, what is a, an index? What is a key? What is the primary key? First up, what is an index or a key? It is, the index or key is a unique identifier that is used to speed up searches. Now, this goes to the implementation part of it. Although we're not there yet, you see that we have to be thinking and considering how and where we're going to implement this database. Now, indexes and keys are used when you're searching for information for you to get what you're looking for, for very quickly. Now, the primary key is a form of key. It's a very special key. And that key is used to uniquely identify what is called each row in your database. Each row is what we refer to as an entity instance. This here is the entity. And each John Doe or Jane Doe is an entity instance. And each instance has their own social security number, last name, and so on. However, in your database, you need to be able to differentiate between the different instances that we have. Later on, we will go into the actual details to, to clearly define what an entity instance is. But for now, the entity instance here represents the row. And we need a way to uniquely identify each row. And that is the purpose of the primary key. The primary key uniquely identifies each row which tells us that the primary key needs to be unique. Now, what you need to remember is this. You need to go through for each entity, look at the attributes, and then select out possible keys, not the primary key as yet. You select out possible keys, and how do you do that? You look at each entity and you say, well, okay, is there or will there be a large number of unique instances of that attribute? Also, what you need to be asking is, will you be searching, right, using last name? Will you be searching using social security number? Will you be searching using the first name? And if the answer to that is yes, then you should create an index or a key for that. Because when it comes to the implementation, once there's an index or a key, when you're searching, it speeds it up greatly uh, when it is indexed. So whatever it is you're typing in to search on, that is what you have to use to, uh, to, to guide you as to what indexes you have. Now, what happens is this. In certain instances, it might be preferable to create an entirely different key. You might have to create a new key and insert it as what we call the primary key, rather than using what we have now, here. Now, what, what you can actually do is for each of them, you can actually insert or create a new key uh, using the keyword ID. For example, you can create a new key called employee ID, position ID, allowance ID, salary scale ID, vehicle ID. Yeah. Or you can go with what you have here and use one of them. The difference is this, when you put in ID, that, that will usually be uh, what is called an auto number, an automatic number that will be generated by whatever database system you implement it on. Okay. The thing is that numbers are much faster to search on than text. When you actually create new relationships and you create something called joins, if the join is a number, the searches are much, much faster within the database. So some, some people just prefer to put IDs straight across. Some people will work with IDs for some and not with the others. It's up to you, it's a design decision. Now I use the social security number, last name, and postcode as indexes. Right, you realize that that makes, that makes a lot of sense. 
for positions, allowances, positions and allowances, I created again two new ones that I call position ID and allowance ID. And because we're going to be searching using position name and allowance name, I use those as indexes or primary keys. For salary scales, I kept the code. And for vehicles, I kept the VIN. Right? Again, that's a design decision. And I just mixed it up so you can see the different ways uh, that it can be done. Again, like I said, some designers just put an ID straight in all the way across. And that will work fine. That will work just as fine. Other designers prefer to use one of the attributes as a primary key. In some instances, you might not be able to. Uh, you know, again, that's a design decision. Now, a question that was almost asked, who was asked, I must say, is that does every table have to have a primary key? The answer is, according to database theory, yes. Every database should have a primary key. That is if the database is to be what is called normalized. With regards to implementation, some databases will allow you to create a table without a primary key because each entity in the end here will become a table. Some databases will allow you to create a table without a primary key. Some databases will not. According to database theory, every table must have a primary, primary key. I strongly recommend that you put a primary key in every single table for two reasons. Number one, uh, it's good it's good database design that's number one and number two in terms of searching the database because the primary key is also an index and when you do things like joins when you're searching and so on it speeds up a lot of things so the the short answer is yes every table should have a primary key the primary key is also uh, an index so after you have the primary key, there's no real need for any other key in the table, but the primary key is absolutely necessary. Though some databases will work without it. After you have selected the primary key, you need to go through the attributes once again to ensure that the attributes depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is you don't want to have any attribute that doesn't belong. Remember we were talking about grades and we said that grades would depend on two things. Uh, it's not actually shown here. But yeah, it's the same type of thing. You want to go through and make sure that every attribute depends on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. That way you get to filter out attributes that you may have put in to let's say this entity that doesn't quite belong here. Remember one of the first things we had to do after we discovered the entity, we had to list the attributes. And after that we had to ensure that each attribute is in there. This is a repeat of that step. Ensuring for the third time that every attribute depends on the primary key and the primary key only. Okay? The key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. So <laughs> what normalization is really? Normalization uh, is, as defined here, the process of putting a relation or a table in a specific normal form. And that can be first, second, or third normal form. According to database theory, you can have up to as much as seven different normal forms. Three are what you are most likely to encounter. Three normal forms. And normalization is ensuring that your database is in first, second, or third normal form. And one of the most important things for normalization is ensuring that every entity has a primary key. As long as every entity has a primary key, you will then say, okay, the database is in first normal form, and you can then move on from there. That is why it's important uh, to have a primary key.